Hey guys, uh, we're moving from public opinion uh, polls to uh, participation by the electorate, okay? And this is taking us into elections and voting in general. Uh, and what you want to be aware of, first of all, is that the electorate is you all, is us, the people who vote, the people who come out and decide. So when you see the book or uh, hear me refer to the electorate, that's what we're talking about, the people who are voting, who make decisions. OK, now, uh, voting is the one thing that most Americans will actually do in participating in the political process. OK, um, Here's the thing about that, though. There are many more forms of participation in the political process than what people would like to believe. It's just that in a lot of ways, they're, they're too lazy to do it. All right. So let's talk about this. Uh, the first means now this is something that a lot of people might have done. Protest is a means of participation in the political process. And uh, we mentioned this before when we were talking about interest groups that protests by themselves don't always change policy. In fact, they, they rarely do. But what it does do, the reason that people get involved in protest is to let the government know and other people know that they are somehow disaffected or upset or think that poor policy decisions have been made. Protest may not change policy on its own, but it's a pretty powerful tool in getting your, your voice to be heard. I remember the media often covers protests and it magnifies your issue. Right? So you gain attention, you magnify your issue. Protest is a valid way of participating in the process. And when we say protest, we're talking about nonviolent stuff. Okay, we're not talking about uh, riots or anything of that nature. Right? The second form of political participation, and most people don't necessarily uh, want to do this for a number of reasons, political discussion. Okay, please tell me you like this little gif right here. You see the two guys talking and one of them's got a raised fist. Tell me that's not fantastic. Now, political discussion. Uh, a number of people often say that, you know, they want to avoid political discussion, especially with somebody uh, that they know is not going to agree with them. And I would say that's not that's not necessarily, uh, you know, something you want to avoid. In fact, it's a good thing to take on political discussion with other people. Right. Here's the reason why. Political discussion may not change somebody's mind. Right. However, what it does do is plant little seeds in people's minds, because I can tell you this. There are some people that even when they make political points that are good points or they bring up good issues, I can't stand that person so much that I would never, ever, ever give them the joy of knowing that they got one over on me. But the one thing that is true is that sometimes I have to sit and think about what they said. Because I don't have something that would refute it. I don't have something to respond to it. And I have to admit they made a good point, And I don't want to admit that. So maybe they walk away thinking, gosh, I can't change that guy's mind. But what they actually did do was plant little seeds in my head. Uh, things that I have to think about and I have to deal with. And we don't like admitting that somebody else is right and we're wrong. Uh, but whether we want to do that or not, uh, political discussion does help. One thing to add about this, too, is that when you engage in political discussion, should you engage with people uh, in person or should you engage with people over uh, social media and the Internet or text messaging? And I think you already know the answer to that question. You can't fully engage with somebody over social media and text message because, number one, you lose a lot of context and hearing somebody's voice. Also, when you see words on a screen, it's not personalized. It's different. When you see another human being, you, you see them, you genuinely understand they're a human. They're not just words on a screen. Uh, they're coming from another person. And you're far less likely to say something snarky or offensive uh, because they are a human being. And also, there's always the possibility that you, know, you could get punched in the face. All right? So political discussion, a valuable tool in terms of participating. Another form of participation by the electorate, communication with policymakers and with the media. Okay, Communication with policymakers and the media. Policymakers, meaning people in the state legislature, United States Congress, people who work for government agencies. Why do you want to communicate with them? Because they are decision makers. They're the ones literally who can change the policy that is affecting you negatively, or they can enact a policy 
that would affect you positively. Why do you communicate with the media? Because they can bring attention to your particular issue and they can magnify your issue. Remember, uh, maybe a handful of people know about your particular problem. Maybe you've had a protest that got locally covered. But what happens if you're able to make contact with a reporter from, say, CNN or Fox News? Then all of a sudden, your local issue has become a nationwide issue. Right? That's why you want to communicate with policymakers and why you want to communicate with the media. Financial contributions. This is another form of participation by the electorate. Giving money to candidates or their campaigns. Financial contributions are meaningful because you want access to that lawmaker. Very few people actually do this, though, and I, I think I remember mentioning this to you before. Uh, in some degree, you don't give personal money, or a lot of folks don't give their personal money out because most people are really, uh, it's not that they're poor, but they're trying to make ends meet. They're trying to pay their bills and take care of their children. And when you have excess money and you're like, hmm, I could spend this $1,000 donating to a political candidate, or I can use it to help take my family on a vacation. That's a no-brainer. You're going to devote that $1,000 and then some to a family vacation. You're like, why should I give it to a politician? How's that going to help me? All right? Not a lot of people do this. Usually only if you have a pretty sizable income do people actually donate money to a campaign. Okay, Financial contributions are extremely valuable. They get you access to a lawmaker. Another form of participation, joining an interest group or a party. Becoming a member of a group or a party surrounds you with like-minded individuals. And who doesn't want to be around people who think uh, or view the world in a think about the world or view the world in the same fashion that you do? Or when you have a suggestion or policy idea, they give you a high five, at least mentally. Uh, another way to look at it here, how many of you all uh, really get a little bit of enjoyment out of the fact that if you make a political post and a uh, hundred people or so like it, you feel pretty good about that. Well, imagine when you're around like-minded people who are physically, uh, verbally giving you affirmation. Number one, it benefits the individual. And number two, the more people you have behind your interest or your particular political party, uh, there's always strength in numbers. Right? It's easy to rip apart one sheet of paper, but tearing a phone book in half, a little bit difficult. You can also actually campaign for a, cam a candidate who is running for office. Why do people do that? There are a number of reasons why people would go and campaign. And when we say campaigning, we're talking about whatever they need. It could, be, it could mean going door to door and talking to individuals in uh, an elected official's district or region. Uh, it could mean answering phones. Uh, it could mean calling people. It could mean stuffing envelopes or preparing mailers out to people. Uh, calling people, asking for donations, helping set up for a fundraiser. Why do people go to that trouble? And one is they want access to that lawmaker. They want to be able to be a part of the team, to have an impact, an indirect impact. Right? But they also want uh, the experience uh, because that's going to lead us to our final form here, uh, and that's running for or holding office. Now, people who campaign they, they may want a job in an administration. Uh, you see right now people who helped Joe Biden campaign, especially the higher up people uh, who have been with him the longest. He's rewarding those people with jobs. And of course, you have to have political experience in that, that area, too. Uh, but usually people campaign to get the experience about campaigning or to get close to a lawmaker or to potentially line up a job for themselves where they can talk and have some impact over policy. But finally, uh, the, other than voting, the last form of participation we want to mention is running for or holding office. You like this, running for office? Ah. The appeal there is that if you run for office and get elected, you become one of the decision makers. You will have a direct impact over policies about what the state or the nation actually does. That's a pretty powerful thing. A lot of people are discouraged from running for office because of the costs behind it, uh, or they don't know how. Uh, but remember, there's a lot of ways for you to participate and get involved, and not many people do it. Okay, 
the one form, uh, the one form of uh, participation that people actually engage in is voting. Okay. And voting is something that people do, but probably because it's the easiest thing to do. And they feel like the, there's uh, it actually has an impact. All right. Now, we'll talk about voting tomorrow, including forms of voter discrimination, uh, different types of voter turnout, et cetera, and why people vote the way they do. So I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, this is a shorter video. Um, so um, hopefully uh, you guys are, are staying safe and staying out of harm's way.